I've took the locks off earlier and stood it on the centre stand ready. Got my mats ready and a few basic tools. I'm whistling again. Tools. Because uh, if you know I've been watching my videos, you'll know I've had trouble with the speedo dying on me. And there was a plug behind there, according to the manual. Unplugged the four different plugs, I didn't know which one it was. Put WD-40 in, still dead. There's another plug inside the headlight shell, so I took all the little fairing off. Unplugged whatever plugs there were, squirted WD into them, still dead. So I had a look online. And it turns out there's a speed sensor which is prone to failure. So I went on the official Honda site which is used by Doble's motorbikes and it listed the part speed sensor which plugs under the airbox. £226. That is scandalous. And I went on eBay and in Japan, you can send to Japan, £92. An £18 post for the same bloody part. And I thought well, there's no scrap ones. And then Colchester motorbikes, one off a scrap bike. And it arrived this week. How much? 39.99. Free post. And this is first time I got it out of the bag. And through the bag I could see the slight crack in the plastic. But as long as the sensor works. But... So that goes in a hole and it picks up something. What, is it revolutions of the front cog or what? And uh, I'm not going to film all the faffing, but I don't even know whether I'll finish it today. It's meant to be like this tomorrow, cold but bright. So I thought I'd do the basics today. Try and finish it. Uh, which one is it? That one. <coughs> and yeah, that ties and horns going to have to come off. So I have to cut through all that bloody insulation tape. Don't lose that. <coughs> I put on have to take the crash bar off. Uh, there's a screw there, screw there, yeah I was going to say what, um, oh there's an American as well, one of my subscribers, thank you very much, uh, said an American guy, guy, American guy to get access to the sensor under here rather than take all the air box out and faff about he's just took this cover off and made a hole you know to get a spanner in to get the two uh, retaining bolts off and i thought yeah that's a good idea and he said i have a pox epoxy resin in the hole up and i thought well why not just dollop black silicone in or if that's all the air being sucked in there why bother about a hole under here? Or will it make the mixture run lean? Which is never a good thing, is it? Good, that's come off a bit rusty. <sighs> Could do with a... I've got a magnet inside. Yeah, I think I'll get my magnet, not going to lose anything. I did a little video going to Philip Yule's for the ACF. Did you decide? Yeah, I got some ACF 50 that I mentioned last week. I think I was too busy doing the war memorial video. Magnet, magnet. There it is. ACF 50, there it is. How much? £16.25 
Mm. And what I was going to squirt it on is a test. Just to see if rust comes back. Is the wheel nut suffer at the front? <coughs> Here, them two, and that on the, on the other side is really rusty. So I thought I'll clean them, squirt them with ATF 50. Well, the nut's on the other side, isn't it? Yeah. And imagine if corrosion gets down on the threads, and when you're trying to remove the front wheel, the head snap off. I'll have to change the tyre next year. So I thought that ACF 50 squirted on there, well away from the disc. Perhaps I thought the disc was making a funny noise as well. I think I need new pads all round. I won't loosen yet, you probably. Yes, you are. There's another one. <coughs> no, that one's not rusty. Was it just two or was there another one down here? Oh, there's another one. That's why the horn has to come off. Um, so, Stanley Knife. Try not to cut through the cable. You can actually buy new horns, this one's getting a bit rattly. What's that there? Oh, I've gone over a cable in the past. I should relocate that. Imagine having your Tarzan horn there. That's what I was thinking. I used to point down here. That might be a better option. I do so like it just compact tape. I thought I'd put over. And I think the wire is under here. Um. I'm not but if I do cut through the cable, like I said, you can get cheap horns for seven ninety nine if this does ever fail. That's got it loose. There you me. It's still connected up here. Faffing about. It's better. Oh, it's my skin. Right, where's the cable? There. Oops. Ah, oh, cables there, good. Get that out of the way. Stay under there. I might go up there. Ah. Oh. So there's a join there, so if we get a new speaker for next summer. Oops. Right, last screw. Don't bugger up. <coughs> God. Try not to chew them up. Kind of threads are them. Oh, screw threads, not uh, bolt threads. I can't replace them with little bolts. Of course, they're going into plastic. Right, is that it? Three of them. The last time I changed this air filter was that video I did, it must be three years ago, if not four years ago, and it was the right bugger to get back in. 
That's a bit wet in there, isn't it? Oh, that's come out easy. Oh, these washable. Looks a bit dirty, doesn't it? I think they're oil coated. Right, I need a torch. Is that fully charged? Probably not. Come on, come on. Is that one of them? I can't see. I'll stop filming now. It looks different than that American's video. He did have the same back, didn't he? He said 916. It looked like he had more fins in his uh, box. But that's a thing down there. That's one of the bolts, I think. But like I said, I can't see without taking my helmet off. I'll stop filming for now and I'll film a bit more if it's worth bothering. Hello again. Yes, I've just been inside for a cloth. Granville fetch a cloth. A charged up torch, a little torch. See a lot better. And like I said, you behind that pipe there. What is that? Oh, that's a water pipe. That there, that nut, can you see? There's one of the nuts, the other is behind, so it's there basically and there. And that American were whittling away with a chisel till he got through and I thought that looks like a lot of faffing about. Plus you'd leave lots of debris or debris. And I thought, hang on. Soldering iron. Don't mind it getting grimy, it'll soon come off. So plug this in into my main supply up there on the extension and just cut a nice neat square from there to there and there to there and just cut a square panel out I've not got a right angle thing but last soldering I did was to mend that toys and all <laughs> so yeah I can afford to get that dirty and it'll soon come off again will it work, will it cut through, well it should do because it gets red hot it's going to be quite safe I was going to leave this till next summer. I thought I can do without a uh, speedo till next summer because MOT isn't due till August. But one of the side effects of this failing is your F uh, FI fuel injection light comes on. And even though it was running smoothly, you're left wondering, aren't you? Well, is it going to trigger a fault? And why would a. Uh, why would that trigger a fault light warning? I mean, there the electrical was for the fuel injectors. That's what failed last year. It was flashing. And in the manual Ian McMullen gave me, it said eight flashes indicates a fault here. And I just pulled the plug off. Squirty WD-40 in that three pin connector. Been fine ever since. But the light came on when I came home from work yesterday, 8 o'clock. It wasn't blinking, it was just permanently on. And this American lad said, yeah, the fault uh, for some reason triggers a fuel injection warning light. So that's why I thought I'd get it sorted, hopefully today. And I've just checked and the, the lead does come into this. This is what I took off last weekend, unplugged, squirty WD in. And it's actually... I've done with it. Uh, I better keep it out of the way, don't put a kneel on it. You see, it's just a three pin. Imagine having a bloody speed sensor. Why not just get a worm drive like the old bikes had? Directly to the speed, or it has to be some fancy bloody electronic gizmo. And the strange thing is, the, tach the rev counter, the tachometer is fine. And the uh, fuel level is fine because that just operates off a floor inside the tank. 
It's just a speed hole and the mileometer. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Not not clock any miles up until <laughs> next summer. There's less miles on the mileometer. Right, so like I said in the bottom of there, a little puddle of the thin oil. And it feels a bit watery as well. So I'll dry it best I can. I, I, I get some more kitchen towels on it. And then plug that in and see how it melts a little window. And like I said before, if it's a neat square, about two inch, well, two inch maybe by two and a half inch square, pop it out, replace the switch, plug it in, dollop black silicone in just to seal it. And like I said, does it need sealing? Or will that extra hole weaken the mixture? Or will it let the engine run freer? Yeah, I mean, with, a, yeah, with that cap on. Yeah. When that's in place, that, that hole there is going over the top of the air filter. So that sucking from the outside air is going in there. And it's sucking air from here, basically, isn't it? I think it's one of them nonsensical things. There's a bloody pipe under there, and of course the pipe goes into the engine breather tube, so all them f so-called fumes everyone seems concerned about these days is being recycled and burnt through the engine again. But it's all bollocks. I mean, when... I spoke to that lad at Triumph, at Philip Wheels Triumph Centre in Blackburn. I saw I always loved the Rocket 3. And so because of Euro emissions, they stopped making the Rocket 3 because it failed all the emissions tests. I said, what a load of crap. Russia and China alone produce billions of tonnes of crap into the atmosphere. And they're worried about a little bit of fumes from a little motorbike. Well, you know, a relatively small engine. It's just nonsense. Oh, it's on, I've seen it on YouTube, it shows there's thousands of factories churning all this thick smoke out. It, said it does actually add up to tonnes. That smoke actually weighs something. You know what I mean? It's all cobblers just to, uh, what, just to annoy people, I think. Yeah, imagine getting that airbox out. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll give this a go. Soldering iron, hot. Wait till it gets hot. I'll start with a the line there, it's like a little surgical square, or even this big circle. And that should be fairly big. I mean, that American just chiseled a hole. I, I can just about get a spanner to it and a socket. Well, why not make a bigger bloody hole then? And get better access. If you're going to cover the hole up anyway afterwards, it should be as big as possible. But he said, do not disturb these fins, because of course they support the circular filter. I just put the filter, <laughs> I've cut a big bo bottle of milk down, or a carton of milk. I'm going to try and wash it in warm water and soap. And I'll go on eBay later to see how much a new one is. I seem to recall genuine Honda ones, cost a bloody fortune, but I might be able to get a pattern one. Money shouldn't be an object anyway, if that money is coming through next March. But I'm not counting any chickens, I'm not going to go mad spending until I get that pension money. It might all have a, a clause to it, you never know, do you? There might be some condition. It's only payable if you're dead. Or oh, some nonsense, you never know. Right, so, kitchen roll, thorough clean and plug that in. Oh, I'll clean it while it's warming up. Pretend I've got a holder. I balanced it on last time. <coughs> I'll do one. Full of dead... Oh, what's full of? A couple of dead leaves and a bit of insulation tape. I'll do one. It? Pottery. Alright, so I'll knock the camera off again. Alright, well, I've uh, cut the square. Well, so it's a square. <laughs> it's the way. It was thicker than I thought, but the soldering iron's got through it. It's unplugged now, cooling down. 
as you can see, can you see that nut there? That bolt head. And the other one is about 50 mil to this side. I can see that. There. Where are we? There. Um, theoretically, I can get it. Let's get me a little long reach socket set. I'll keep that magnet handy just in case the bloody bolts decide not to play a ball and bounce somewhere inside that engine area. <sighs> Let's hope everything goes smoothly. Long reach. 10 mil. Yep. Let's have a look. 10 mil or 12. Still fiddly with my big hands. Oh yeah, it's on. Right. Have to keep me on the ton. I'm doing that way. Yes, good. I thought it might be tight, but uh, it is sort of sheltered there. It's not going to get corroded. That's one out. The tricky one's yet to come. Oops. Wait for a click. It's the top of the thread then. Picture these aren't magnetic. Set my helmet off again. I'm glad it seems to work. So whoever that American, he had a funny name actually. <laughs> it wasn't eat my dust. It was eat fight dust, which I thought was a bit weird, but good tip. I actually thought of taking it to yours and saying, you know, sort it out. Otherwise, it's filled its MOT in the back. It's no good. So it's worth spending four hours labour to do it all. If this works, it's sorted, isn't it? Quick, simple fix. With only my labour to worry about, a brew and lots of biscuits. I just take half a pack of chocolate, McVitie's digestive. Right, I'll continue. Uh, well, it's a good job the bloody time's obscure with that Power Director logo. Rather drastic, but I've had to extend the hole to get the bloody to get that in. It was skewed idle on the nut and it wouldn't turn. So, I've looked there and I mean that will be sufficient I think to hold it in place plus I could budge something there. <laughs> I know what a mess but it's finally come out and it was, look at that, soaking wet even though there's an o-ring. A bloody thing soaking wet. Is that why it's failed? Or it just crap. What a daft idea. I presume other bikes do it as well. No worm drive off the front wheel anymore. It's all electronic. So that goes in a hole. Now I wondered if something whizzes round it, you know, and that picks up the revolutions. But I've just been looking inside and I can't see anything moving. No, I might leave it till tomorrow. It's going dark fit the bloody new one. That's going to be a pain. Is that still fastened to it? Silly sod. I don't know how nothing goes down that hole. There's no debris. Oh, there's a piece there. Right, 
it's gone. I nearly punched a hole in the water pipe with me <laughs> soldering iron. Really, I look well if I punctured that. Right, so. Yeah, I'll feed that through there. Feed the cable through here and then try and get that into place. Get the nuts back in. I mean, the nuts. I think I'll put a bit of grease on them. But I mean, that should outlast if that works from the bloody breakers, Colchester breakers. I know that's the old one. <laughs> if that works, it should outlast the bike. It's done 40,000 miles. And only just started going pear shapes. <coughs> Before it goes dark, I'll have a go with it. But if I can't do it, I'll do it tomorrow. And like I said, I have to wash your air filter and dry it out. It's meant to be nice tomorrow, so I might have more patience then. And a bit more strength. Don't need them. I don't need soldering iron anymore, I should put that away. You never get cluttered up with tools you don't need. If you've done the job, get them out bloody way. Magnet, I'll need that. Hacksaw, I don't need that. Right, I'll have a go at it, but like I said, it's going dark now. What a faff. At least it's out though. Well, just before the battery runs out, can you hear that clicking noise? It's a low battery. Got it in place, a lot easier getting the bloody bolts in. I put a bit of grease on to hold the bolts in place and then tightened it up. Plugs back in, well, that plug is the one back in place. Not sure what that is. I unplugged that because it got in the way. Pull that down. Before the light totally fades. It's stuck on. Like I said, there's about five in a bundle. There we are. That's it. So it's a waterproof cover. Yeah, look at that, some kind of air quality monitor and all that cobbled. Oh, look, bollocks in it. Took all them ways there, that sits nicely there. That should be a little bit more covered up. I don't know what that is, another big white plug. And it's just a mass of electronic sensors. Why? Like I said, all that emissions and nonsense. When Russia and China are churning tons out, millions of tons. Right, well, theoretically that's all done now. I should take it for a test for it, shouldn't I? No, before sealing it up. Although if it's still not working. Well, what can I do? Get uh, one from Japan. I didn't like I said, £92 plus 18 postage. Hmm. But the UK price, 226 so this £40 second hand one. Air filter. I'll have to dry that out. I want to run it without an air filter. And a proper test wouldn't be just up and down the street, it'd be a proper little run out. I'll leave it till tomorrow. I'll leave it like this. Let it recover from its major surgery. <laughs> All that melted plastic. But like I said, I'll test, put the filter back in, put the side panel back on. Test it, and if everything's fine, I'll take the air filter back out and seal this up with black silicone. So it probably never need doing again. And nothing else will have to come out. I've always wondered if the starter motor's okay. I think that'll be the next to go, the copper brushes. I once had to replace them on my night so because they eventually wear down to nothing. It says brushes are actually little copy blocks. 
rubbing against um, what they're called. I forgot what they're called now. Some copper strips. I think they call like accentuator boys. Something boys. I'll have to turn it round. But maybe when that was stuttering, the starter motor was stuttering, I think that was because of the fault on the other fault on the uh, stop switch. Because I don't use it anymore, it's starting fine. I think I'll uncover that and just not use it. I squirted some oil into that and it started working fine, but I didn't want to tempt fate by using it again. But anyway, yes, hopefully this will be a fix, so I think I'll leave it there, thank you for watching. I'll do a test ride tomorrow, so I'll upload this, it's just a fix. But I'm just copying off what that American said, I just made the hole a bit bigger because of my bigger hands. Okay, that's it, bye for now. Thank you for watching, hope this helps if anyone else has an old hornet. Make a big hole and then squeeze black silicone in after you've done a test ride. Okay, bye for now.